What's up YouTube? It's your boy and I'm back with another video man and you already know what I need you to do. Hit the subscribe, hit the like, hit the notification bell because it does go a long way with helping out the channel. If this is your first time, welcome to Hold My Nuts Podcast where we talk about everything semen retention and no fap. If you already been rocking with your boy, you already know the love is real. Like I tell you guys on all my videos, this is a secret channel. No one knows about it except me and those who follow. And um, it's just real awesome that everything is authentic. And it's a community of brothers that want to elevate to the next level, man. So I really, really appreciate you guys. Um, so without further ado, man, let's get into this video. Today's title is He Ran. He ran. I know you're probably asking yourself, who ran? Joseph. Now, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the story of Joseph. So I'm going to break it down for you the best that I can and show you how this applies to semen retention in your own personal life. So let's get into it. So Joseph, if you don't remember, Joseph was the son of Jacob. Um, he had 12 brothers, 11 brothers. He was the 12th brother. And um, they actually was very jealous of their little brother because he said some things about a dream he had that they would all follow him. They would bow down to him in, 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 in a sense. And um, so they sold their brother into slavery. They sold their brother into slavery. He ends up in Egypt and he is the servant of one of Egypt's officials. Um, he's an official of Pharaoh. So it's um, one of Pharaoh's officials. So he ends up being in um, in his household. So this official, his name was Potiphar. Um, if you want to follow this story, guys, it's in first. I'm sorry. It's in Genesis 39 of um, through Genesis 41. You can read about this story. So God blessed Jacob with um, he was just with Jacob. So I'm sorry, not Jacob, Joseph. He was with Joseph and everything that Joseph did was blessed. He just had amazing wisdom. He just knew how to get things done. He was just a man that was just, you know, God was with him. He was with him. And everything that Joseph touched turned to gold. It turned to gold. Everything that Joseph took. So Potiphar, the Egyptian who was the official of Pharaoh, he took notice of this. He was like, everything this dude does turns to gold. So he turned over his whole household to Joseph. He put Joseph in charge of all of his affairs, all of his assets, all of his servants. They all had to answer to Joseph because he saw that Joseph, he saw that God was with Joseph. This is a beautiful story, guys. So what happens is. One day, Joseph is, you know, in the home and he's he's doing his thing. He's doing business as usual and he's making sure everything is taken care of. Potiphar doesn't have anything to worry about because Joseph is taking care of it and his his wealth is increasing. Everything is going good. Potiphar, Potiphar's wife was actually took notice. The Bible says she took notice of Joseph because they said that he had a, a nice build and that Joseph was very handsome. So Potiphar's wife took notice of Joseph. So she came to Joseph one day and she asked him to come sleep with her. She was like, listen, oh, I see you. I see you doing your thing. Come and sleep with me. Come lie with me. And Joseph was like, I can't do that. He immediately resists the temptation that was offered to him on his plate. He said, I can't I can't come sleep with you. He was like, my master has put me in charge of all of his of everything in his whole household. He was like, no one in this household is greater than me except Potiphar. I couldn't turn my back on him. I couldn't sleep with my master's wife. I couldn't do such a thing. He resisted her. He didn't even fall into the trap of even thinking about what it would actually be like to be with Potiphar's wife. He resisted her from the very beginning. And the Bible says that day after day, Potiphar's wife would come at Joseph to sleep with him, to get him to fall into this transgression against his master. But Joseph, 
He kept resisting. He kept resisting. He kept turning her down. He kept saying no. He was resisting. Joseph had something special, man. The Lord said that he, the Bible says that the Lord was with Joseph. Joseph had something special, man. He was, he was dead set on honoring God and honoring his master. He was honoring his master behind his master's back. He wasn't just pretending to be a good servant in the, in, in the face of his master when his master was present, but he was doing this behind his back. He was like, listen, man, I'm not going to defile myself before God and I'm not going to, you know, do this treachery to the person who gave me everything. How could I turn my back on him? This dude's loyal. This dude understands where he comes from. Potiphar wife, day after day, she's coming after him. So one day. Just so happened, none of the servants was in Potiphar's house. It was just Joseph and it was just Potiphar's wife. So this particular day, they're all alone. Potiphar's wife comes at Joseph. She physically comes at him and she grabs him and she's trying to pull him in. She's trying to get him to do the do. She's trying to get him to, to you know, to, to knock her down. Joseph, the Bible says Joseph ran. He ran. He ran. He ran out of the house. He flee. She was in hot pursuit and Joseph, he took off. He ran from that temptation without a question, without a doubt. Didn't give a couple kisses. Didn't do a lot of touching and been like, nah. no, he ran. He didn't do any of that. And it says that she tore his cloak or his cloak was left behind. So she had a piece of his garment with her. So when Potiphar comes back home, well, before Potiphar comes back home, she tells all of her servants, she screams and all of her servants come in and they're like, yo, 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 what's going on? She was like the Hebrew slave, Joseph, he tried to sleep with me. And when I screamed and he got scared and he ran. And when Potiphar came back, she told him what happened. And Potiphar, the Bible says that Potiphar was filled with anger. Of course, he would be filled with anger. Who wouldn't? And had Joseph thrown into prison. So Joseph is living a righteous life, doing the right thing. His master believes the story of his wife. And honestly, that story is going to go like that a lot of times, unless there's going to be some some hardcore evidence to prove your innocence. Potiphar has him thrown into prison. Joseph goes into prison. The Bible says that Joseph had favor with the prison guards. So the prison guards, just they just saw that God was with Joseph. So they put him in charge of all of the prisoners. Everywhere Joseph goes, he's in charge. He has a gift. He has the presence of the Lord with him. They put him in charge of all the prisoners. So Joseph's doing his thing. He's in prison for a couple of years. These two servants of the Pharaoh are actually thrown into prison because Pharaoh got upset with them about something. Don't know what it was, but he got upset with them about something. So it was Pharaoh's cupbearer, the guy who drinks the, the wine before he gives it to the king to make sure there's no poison in it, and the baker. He throws both of these guys into prison. So one of these days, these two guys, they wake up and Joseph noticed that they were both, they looked disturbed and they both had dreams. And Joseph was like, yo, what's up? What's up with you guys? Why y'all, you know, you guys look, you know, pretty disturbed. Every, is everything OK? So the cupbearer tells him a dream about. Um, it tells him a dream. You can look at the You can look at the Bible for the details of the dream. But basically, the prophecy of the dream was that the cupbearer would be restored back to the king. He would get his job back. He would be the cupbearer and everything would go back to where it was. He would be blessed. The baker told his dream to Joseph and Joseph interpreted the dream for him. And Joseph says that you're going to have your head's going to be lifted up off of your body and, and, the, and the pigeons or, or the, um, the vultures or whatever are going to eat at your brains and you're going to die in three days. So in three days, the cupbearer was going to be restored back to his position. In three days, the baker was going to be his head was going to be cut off. Joseph tells the cupbearer, he was like, listen, man, remember me when you go back, you know, the Pharaoh. He was like, I'm not supposed to be in this prison. I'm here unjustly. So remember me. So Joseph is still in prison after obeying the Lord, after doing everything that he's supposed to do. He's still in prison. 
a lot of times, guys, when we're on semen retention, no one sees the sacrifices that we're making in order to live a righteous lifestyle. When you say, you know what, I'm not going to talk to this man's wife behind his back. I'm not going to engage in that type of activity. No one sees that. But you, the person who's trying to get you to fall into sin and God, no one sees it. God sees it, but he's the only one who needs to see it. So you're doing these things in secret and God is watching. The hosts of heaven are watching. And sometimes we could feel like, man, you're all alone. You could be thrown into prison like Joseph. Joseph is still following the Lord. He's still practicing sexual restraint. He's still not giving into the temptation. He still honored his master. He's still honoring the Lord. He's still doing the right thing. And we have to do the right thing when it comes to sexual appetite, sexual desires, so that we don't fall into sexual temptation. We don't want to fall into the trap of watching porn, watching people get desecrated on 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 videos and all these different porn sites. Girls, you know, being drugged up, uh, forced to have sex on camera and we're giving into the beast. We're, we're paying them with our viewership because they're getting they're getting ad revenue from this. Right. Or we causing a family to be broken up because we are engaging in a relationship that is ungodly and we're causing a family to be destroyed. And we're bringing we're bringing havoc on this family because we can't control our appetite. Joseph is teaching us and showing us how to go about this, even when faced with opposition. So fast forward two years later, the cupbearer is back into the king's service just like Joseph said he was. Pharaoh has a dream, a very disturbing dream about seven fat cows and about seven lean cows. And in the dream, the seven lean cows, they eat up the seven fat cows. And the Pharaoh calls on all the magicians. He calls on everyone who can possibly interpret this dream and give him this revelation. None of them can give him the revelation. The cupbearer says, there was this particular guy named Joseph. He's down in the prison and it was between me and the cupbearer. And we both had disturbing dreams. Well, we both had dreams and we couldn't understand them. And we asked Joseph to interpret these dreams and he interpreted these dreams for us. And they both came true. He said that I would be restored back to my position and that the baker head would be lifted off of his body. So the king sent for Joseph. He sent for Joseph in prison. Joseph comes to the king, or Pharaoh, and Pharaoh says, I heard that you interpret dreams. So Pharaoh told him the dream. I saw seven fat cows. I saw seven lean cows and the seven lean cows ate up the seven fat cows. And I heard that you can interpret dreams. And Joseph says to him, I can't interpret dreams, but the Lord will give you the revelation of these dreams that you desire. So Joseph said that the seven fat cows represented seven years and also the seven lean cows represented seven years. And the seven fat cows represents time of prosperity for Egypt, great prosperity and abundance. And the seven lean cows represents seven years of famine, a great famine that's going to come upon the earth. I mean, come upon uh, Egypt. And so Joseph actually gave him. A suggestion. He was like, yo, take a fifth of all of the crops that you have for the next seven years and store it up in the cities so that when the famine comes, you won't, you know, your people won't suffer. So the king said, that's a great idea. And he said he looked at the officials and he was like, yo, who could who could oversee this? And it came to the Pharaoh that, you know what, Joseph, you you oversee this. You oversee this. You you are in charge of this. And the Pharaoh put Joseph in charge of all of Egypt. He went from being a Hebrew slave. To being a servant of Potiphar's house, an of official of <clears throat> the the Pharaoh being falsely accused of adultery. Being thrown into prison, still stay faithful, still stand it firm, still didn't fold, and then had an opportunity to interpret a dream for the Pharaoh. God gives him the ability to interpret the dream. Pharaoh puts him in charge of all of Egypt. 
So now he's in charge of Potiphar, who he was a servant of, who, who threw him into prison for sleeping with his wife. Or allegedly sleeping with his wife, being falsely accused of sleeping with his wife. He threw him into prison. Now he's in charge of him. He's second in command. A Hebrew slave, second in command of all of Egypt. The only one who has more power than him is Pharaoh himself. Guys, the moral of the story is, is that you have to stand firm on your semen retention journey. You have to abstain from sexual immorality. You have to abstain from lust. Do the right thing and God will indeed bless you. He will bless your efforts. He will bless the works of your hand. One, because you're going to God honors those who honors him. You're going to be keeping the commandments. Thou shall not commit adultery. Thou shall not fornicate. Thou shall not do, you know, do all these sexual things. Right. You, you're you're standing firm on your journey. When Joseph was Joseph, Joseph could have gave into that temptation. And it would have been pleasurable for a moment. But he would have he would have ate the bitter fruit of it for sure. Look at David. I did a video on David. David ate the fruit. Of his transgressions and that fruit was bitter. Joseph ate the fruit of his obedience and that put him that took him from being a Hebrew slave to being second in command of all of Egypt. That's crazy. That's crazy. Guys, sometimes we might not see the benefits right away. Um, or we might not see the fruit of our labor right away. But the Bible does say that do not be weary in well doing for in due time you will reap the reward. Joseph didn't get weary in well doing. And in due time, he received the reward from the Lord. A reward that he probably couldn't have even ever imagined. But if he had never received it, he was still content with not giving in to that sexual temptation. Joseph's story is a great story, a great model that we all can follow. We all get faced with these type of temptations every single day, every week. We're getting played with temptations. But the Bible says, woe to the one these temptations come by. So the people that are putting out these temptations, the people who are making it hard for us to follow down this righteous path. The Bible says that God's going to deal with them. He's going to deal with them. He's going to deal with them. So, guys, I'm, I'm doing this video so you can be encouraged that there are examples in the Bible that show us how to deal with temptation. God gave grace to David. He also gave grace to Joseph. God forgave David for his transgressions and he still loved David. The Bible says that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. So he gave grace to David, even though he committed that transgression. And he also gave grace to Joseph, even though um, Joseph um, even though it didn't come speedily for Joseph, it still came and he, he put him in charge of all of Egypt. The Bible says, man, blessed is the man whose sins are forgiven. So even though David transgressed, we were able to learn from him. The Bible says that we overcome by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the lamb. David was still blessed in the fact that his sins were forgiven. And Joseph was blessed in the physical because he was he was he, he he obeyed God. He refused to give in to the sexual temptation. He refused to defile himself. He refused to defile God by committing these wicked acts. And he refused to to be disloyal to the man who put everything in his hands. Sometimes what we think is getting taken away, God is preparing us for something better. Be encouraged, brothers. Be encouraged. You have the juice. You have the power of God. Trust in the Lord. And he'll help you put the death, the deeds of the body. Fight this battle from a spiritual standpoint. That's how you're going to win. Guys, <laughs> SR, baby. We all come to SR for different reasons. But when we come to SR, we have to understand a lot of things that come with it and how to deal with it. And how to pair this with our spirituality to the most high God. He's going to show us because sexual sin, that's the scene that just leads. That's just that's just the open gateway 
to destruction. I love you guys. This is Hold My Nut Podcast. Drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think, man. And I'm going to holler at you in the next one. Peace.